Good boy, Tucker. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hey, hey. Welcome. Work smarter where you want. Consistency is key. And remember, if it's not in Red Tail, it never happened. This is learning at its most fun. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Red Tail webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about how to handle multiple rep codes. And I have an assistant today. Come here. Leo's here. Because um, there's multiple of us. There's multiple rep codes. There's multiple advisors in the office. And we've got to handle situations where some clients belong to maybe one advisor, some clients belong to another advisor, or you might have split rep code situations where a client could be split between two or more advisors. So whatever your situation is today, whether you're a solo advisor office or you've got 15 advisors with up to five advisor splits on a single client, this webinar can relate to any, anywhere in between or anywhere on that spectrum. Uh, my name is Haley Nandrup and I'm one of the trainers here at Redtail. And we're gonna walk through different strategies that you can use within Redtail CRM to identify who clients belong to, whether it's a single advisor or like I mentioned, up to like a five advisor split, for example. And I'll even give some examples from situations that I've seen that advisors use or admins use to designate which clients an advisor belongs to. So let's go ahead and dive on into the CRM and talk about those, um, those available options or features within Redtail. So whether you've been using Redtail for a long time or you're new to the CRM, you should be able to pick up at least one or two tips or tricks from today's webinar for designating who clients belong to. So the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to multiple rep codes is the servicing and writing advisor field within Redtail. Now, if you're not familiar with this field, it is on a contact record. So we would go to a contact record. Let's go to one of my favorites. We'll search for Dolly and we'll bring up her record. Now in the CRM, there's different types of information. There's contact information, just like your Rolodex, and then there's CRM information, and that's information that really just makes that person reportable, searchable, filterable, whatever word you wanna use there. It helps you find that person based on their relationship with your business, really. So here's their CRM information. Dolly is an active client, so she's one of my best contacts because my clients are my, um, they're, they're the best contacts in my database. They fund my business. And she's the best of the best. She's one of my AAA clients, which is my top tier. And then if I look a little bit lower, her servicing advisor is Jet. And her writing advisor is also Jet. And that is somebody in my database. It might be somebody in your database. It might be somebody who was in your database previously, but doesn't, uh, isn't involved with the business anymore. Maybe they've gone out and branched off their own and left this client with you. This does not have to be a user within the database. And I can't stress that enough. For some of you watching this webinar, you may say, uh, oh, well, it was a former client of an advisor that I bought a book of business from. That is a great way to use servicing and writing advisor. Even though it's not an active rep code or it's not a multiple rep code in a current situation, it is a great way to segment your contacts and say, well, who came from that book of business originally? And then who have I gained since? And that's just one of many ways to record the differences. So keep that in mind. This is, does not have to be somebody in the database. So if we go to edit this servicing and writing advisor, we're gonna get a list. And the first question I always get is, where does this list come from? Who made this list? Who designated the available options on these lists? Well, the answer is one of two, two things. Um, one, it could be an admin within your database. So that's someone who logs into your Redtail CRM and they have administrative access to adjust the options on this list. 
If you are an administrator, you can do that by going under your name in the top right hand corner and opening manage your account. Now I'm going to use one of Redtail's tricks here and I'm going to right click over manage your account and open the link in a new tab. Because I want to stay on Dolly's record, we're going to circle back to her. But we're also going to click on that new browser tab that opened at the top of my browser and then we're going to scroll down under admins only and go to manage database lists. Now it's really easy to tell if you're not an admin, if you're not an administrator, you're not going to see this section at all. And not everyone has to be an administrator. It's not an indication that something is wrong if you don't see this section, so don't worry about that. But if you should have the option to edit those lists, that might be something you want to talk about with your team internally and see who your administrators are and have a conversation on whether or not you need that access to fulfill your role. So we're going to open Manage Database Lists. And this is a list of all the lists that you can add to or edit within your system. Now, if you've been using Redtail for a while, I know you know what this page is, but just in case you're new, you can choose any of these fields on the right hand side and then add to or edit the available options. So servicing and writing advisors are right here on the right hand side and you can add to this list. Now what's really important to know is that servicing and writing advisors are great for designating certain people in your database who fulfill a service for that client. Well, yikes, what do I mean by that, right? I mean that the servicing advisor might be the person who answers a phone call when that client calls with a question. But the writing advisor might be the person who collects the commission on that client's accounts or the primary commission or they have the larger split between the two. That is just an example of how your office can use these fields to define who should be the servicing versus the writing advisor. And if the servicing and writing advisor are the same person, it's okay to have that person in both lists as well. I've seen a servicing advisor list with one option or upwards of 30 options. It really just depends on how your office is structured. If you have multiple locations using the same red tail database and each location has multiple advisors, your list is going to be a little bit longer than a database that say only has two or three advisors and one office location. Just an organizational tip, if you do have multiple locations, you can these are free text fields, so you can type in whatever you'd like here. Say I had an office in um, Rome, Rome, Georgia. So I would put in Rome and then colon Austin Johnson. And then for Jet, he say he's also in Rome. So I'm gonna put in Rome, update. And then that's an easy way just at a glance to tell who's at what location. If you're like say of three, locations and five or six advisors total, you probably know who is where. But as you get larger, it might be harder and harder to identify which advisors are at which location. So this is a great way to make the list sort by location as well. All right, so everyone on the call that has more than two advisors or a more than two advisor split, what are we gonna do? There's only two fields for servicing and writing advisor, right? That's right. So the servicing advisor, like I mentioned, is a free text field. So if you want to use this for rep codes instead of someone's name, you can totally do that. We can totally set this to a rep code. Let's do um, Redtail. We'll do Redtail XY. So we'll add that as a servicing advisor. So now I know that that client belongs to that rep code. Depending on how many rep codes your office has, you might want to identify them based on their rep code here. Um, now that's only applicable if your clients are split by rep code or by advisor. Sometimes the contacts are not split by rep code, but the accounts are. So keep that in mind. If you have advisors who might share a client but their 529 plan is under one advisor and their retirement account is under another advisor, 
then you're not really going to use the servicing advisor field for that type of situation. I'll talk about that in just a second. So this is one option um, for using the, the rep code here. We're not going to apply a new value since we just created that. And then the writing advisor works the same way. Keep in mind also with your servicing and writing advisors, you can only have one of each at a time. So again, for you offices that have more than two advisors or more than two advisors split, you're going to start to use keywords instead of servicing and writing advisors or in addition to. So keywords are also on this list page and these are more like searchable labels. Think of these as permanent or historical pieces of information or tags that you can put on a contact record that make them searchable and you can easily identify who they belong to. So if we had multiple advisors, I might add a keyword for advisor Leo, advisor Malcolm, and then I might add additional advisors. Now I used this scenario with an office who had 25 advisors and an up to five advisors split on any one contact record. So they weren't divvying up the accounts, they were divvying up the contacts themselves. So you can, that way you can tag everyone who has a certain advisor of Leo or a certain advisor of Malcolm, or maybe Leo and Malcolm, and Tony, and Cheryl, and Sue, or whoever the other advisors are. Um, now, however you're doing it, you've heard it on our other webinars before, however you're tracking your multiple rep codes or your advisors, you're gonna do it consistently for the whole database. So you don't wanna track one advisor in the servicing and writing advisor field, and then another set of advisors in the keywords. That's just gonna cause confusion and, and not be very clear to everyone in your office how it's structured. So keep that in mind as well. Now when using keywords, the, the benefit of using keywords is that you can search for everyone that has an advisor of Leo or has an advisor of Malcolm. Or you can search for anyone who has an advisor of Leo but not Malcolm or Leo, Malcolm, and some other third person. So let's add, a, let's add myself as well, and then let's go to the search page and see what that looks like. Advisor, okay. So we're gonna go to the contacts page over on the left-hand side, and we're gonna go to contacts A to Z, and we're gonna click on all. And then let's just select a couple random records to assign, maybe not all of them, we'll select some random records to assign the servicing advisor in bulk of myself. So we're gonna choose that keyword of Haley, scroll all the way down, and then assign the keyword. And then let's do a couple more and assign Malcolm. So we're gonna assign a keyword here, and then we're gonna assign the keyword of advisor Leo, or we'll do Malcolm and Leo. And then we'll go all the way down to the bottom and assign. Now it's okay if your keywords list gets pretty long, your keywords are used for lots of things. So that's kind of why you wanna organize it and maybe put a little title before it with a colon so you can organize that list and it doesn't get too cluttered. Now that we've got some contacts with those keywords on, using the advanced search, we can say who has a contact keyword, keyword equal to advisor Haley and run that list. So I'm going to get everyone that has myself. But say I want to look for anyone who has me and Malcolm. We can then select and and say contact keyword equal to Malcolm and run that list. And then we could even divvy it further and say who has, also has Leo or who has this five advisor split, this four advisor split. 
And that's a great way to be able to run flexible searches and see all of Haley's, all of Haley's and Malcolm's and any variety that you want. You could also track the rep code in addition to using these keywords for search reasons. So the, the, key, the key here, pun intended, the key here with using keywords is that they're searchable. You can easily find who belongs to a certain advisor or who doesn't belong to a certain advisor or rep code, either way. Uh, it just depends on, on what you wanna be able to search and track. Now, if you've got, if you wanna be able to report on rep codes as well as advisors and have the flexibility of both, that's where I'd recommend having a user defined field for the rep code. So say that Malcolm and I share a rep code, but Malcolm Leo and I share a different rep code. Then you can keep track of those on the contact record as well through what's called a user defined field. So let's go under our name in the top right hand corner, back to manage your account, and back to database list. Now here, under user defined fields, this is where you get to be super creative with the system. You get to be a developer and you get to add or um, add a, a function or a code or a field that doesn't exist in the system currently. So we're gonna say um, rep code and I'm gonna put 2020. And then for this, we can either say any text which means when somebody wants to fill this out on a contact record, they can type whatever they want. I don't recommend that option. Why wouldn't I recommend that option? Well, I don't recommend it because if you're typing quickly or if you're uh, typing differently than someone else, then it's gonna be very hard to report on any rep codes. Maybe you've got a little selective dyslexia. I feel like I have that at times where you're trying to type in RTXY, but you type in RTYX, it's gonna be very difficult to report on that. So keep that in mind. I'd recommend using the list of values feature instead and putting in all the available rep codes that your office has. Now this does mean when you have a new rep code that's added, you're gonna to want to come back into your name manager account and add that new value option. So make it part of your process. Whenever a new rep code is opened or, or um, added to your office, you're gonna come in here and add it as a value option. You will not run out of value options here. I had an office use this. They had 500, 500, 500 rep codes, and there were that many values in their list. So you, you won't run into a limit with this option. And what this does is it allows you to report on who has a certain split within the office. So I can now report on this specific rep code by using the user defined field report instead of the search. And for that, you'd go to reports over on the left hand side, user defined field reports. And if you find yourself using this one frequently, one of our newer features is that you can star or favorite that report, and now I don't have to scroll so far in the future, it's gonna be right at the top in my favorite reports. And then I can filter this list and see, well, who has rep code 2020 contains and a certain value, and I can search of my available values here. Now keep in mind, I'm not gonna get anybody because I just added this option, but you would get a list of contacts that have that, that rep code. And that part of putting in that rep code could be part of the onboarding process, your onboarding workflow, or um, whatever procedure you have for onboarding clients from another database or from prospect. So, so far we've talked about a couple different options, servicing, writing advisor, keywords, and user-defined fields. How do you know what's right for you? How do you know what's right for your office? Well, the big question, the big questions you're gonna ask yourselves are, what do I need to be able to search for? Do I need to be able to search on clients that came from a previous book of business? And if I do, what's the best way to search on those? Keywords, 
do I want to keep that information around for a long time? Or can I afford to use like the servicing advisor field for that previous advisor because I'm not going to use that field for anything else? And then as far as your, your keywords go, um, how can I make sure that clients have the appropriate keywords and they're labeled with the appropriate advisors based on the keywords? If you do use keywords for advisors or servicing advisors, you're going to want to keep running a list or auditing your book of business on a regular basis to see who doesn't have a servicing advisor or writing advisor or who doesn't have a keyword of one of your advisor keywords. So what do I mean by that? Um, well, your clients are your contacts that have a status of client. So we're going to say contact status equal to active client. In my office, I have four advisors, let's say. So oh, every client in my client list should be assigned a servicing advisor. If they don't have a servicing advisor assigned, then they could fall through the cracks. Maybe they don't get a review or they don't get any type of mailers. Oh my gosh, they don't get a birthday card. Like really bad things can happen if they don't have a servicing advisor. So you can search for contacts that have a status of active client and a contact servicing advisor that is empty. And let's see how much bad data I have in here. Yikes, I have 49 records that don't have a servicing advisor, so I've got some cleanup to do. I want to make sure that these records are labeled with who they belong to. Now, if you use the, uh, the keyword method, you're not gonna search for a keyword being empty, but instead you're gonna search for the keyword is not equal to, and then select your available advisors. So depending on how many advisors you have, you're gonna select multiple advisors in the search and keep clicking and, because we wanna make sure that we're getting any records without any of those keywords. So let's fill this out really quick here. And we're going to say not equal to Leo and then not equal to Malcolm. So I've got my three advisors. Now I'm looking for any active client that doesn't have a keyword of advisor Haley, advisor Leo, or advisor Malcolm. I'm getting anybody that doesn't have any three of these keywords. And it's going to be a lot of records since I just created these keywords. But that way I'm making sure that everybody get an available advisor. So then I could select a bunch of these records and give them the appropriate advisor. And then they'll fall off this search or fall off this list. So if you have a cleanup procedure or a cleanup process, if you watched any of our other Redtail webinars and have a cleanup workflow even, this is something to watch out for. If you run a monthly birthday list for each advisor, make sure that you're routinely checking to see which clients don't have an advisor on their contact record. And you can also check in other ways. You can make sure that your onboarding workflow assigns a keyword or servicing or writing advisor or tell someone in your office to do that when you're onboarding a client as well. So these are all things to think about. And then what about when your advisors don't split on the contact level, but we split on the account level. Now this is not uncommon, right? Sometimes we've got clients who have one account with one advisor and another account with another advisor. I don't run into it every day, but I do run into it routinely enough that um, we should talk about it. So in those options, you might have one rep code for one account and one rep code for another account. It's very easy to keep track of those. And now it's very similar to the contact user-defined fields under your name, manager account, manage database list. The only difference here is instead of using a contact user-defined field over here on the right-hand side, you're going to use an account user-defined field. It's, it's the same thing. You can add your own field that doesn't exist in Redtail currently but you're adding it instead of at the contact level, 
you're adding it at the user level, or sorry, at the, <laughs> at the account level. So this, um, this IRA or this 529 plan or this benefit or this um, inherited account or, or whatever it is, um, is going to have a rep code instead of the contact having a rep code assigned to them. This is also where you can keep track of commission amount. In this case, we had an advisor example, or we're gonna add a rep code example. And then, like I recommended before, we do a list of values and then we add the available rep codes to this list so that anybody in our database could select from those rep codes when assigning accounts. And those are reported on under reports, under account reports, I apologize, under reports, under user defined field reports, and then under account user defined fields. So then you can see what are all the accounts that are under this advisor, what are all the accounts under that advisor, and then um, report on or, or search from there. So there's a lot of flexibility here with tracking your servicing, your writing advisor, your keywords, or your user-defined fields. If you do track your advisors or who your clients belong to using the keywords or the user-defined fields, you can still use the servicing and writing advisor fields for other pieces of information. For example, maybe who is that, person de that person's designated client service rep? Maybe your, your business is so big that you've got a designated client service person that works with a certain advisor or an associate advisor who's a junior advisor who's coming on under a senior advisor. So those fields are usable for other functions as well if you do track advisors through keywords and user-defined fields. Whatever you do, just do it consistently and make sure that everyone in your office is on the same page. I'd recommend having one or two people in charge of your red tail management and these decisions going through that, that one or those two people, if possible. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.